Welcome to our youth service this afternoon. The Lord bless you. Thank you very much for coming. Um, we're going to continue on by singing a few congregational songs. And um, I'm going to call on Anu to come and lead us. And we're going to start off with Shout to the Lord. We'll sing that chorus through, as well as um, a few other, few more songs. Anu. Okay, so first song is Shout to the Lord, so let's give a good shout to the Lord and just praise the Lord for the first, um, our first youth service.
thank God that we can rely on them. So the next one we're going to sing is You Are My Hiding Place. Truly, Jesus is our hiding place. Um, Yeah, so we'll sing... We'll sing the we'll sing it twice over. So our next song will be You Are My All in All after a very short introduction from the piano. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all. on that song we're just going to do one thing so um this side is going to sing the verse and this side is going to sing the chorus and then we'll swap it round we'll just do it with the first verse so whilst you guys are singing um the first verse you guys are singing the chorus and then when you go to the chorus you go to the verse is that okay but if you get mixed up just sing whatever you want to sing so just after the chorus first chorus G, take a step when I am here. You are the treasure that I see. You are my God. Seeking you as a precious time. I'll up a beautiful world. You are my God. 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 You are my
that worked out better than I thought it would. Um, okay, so our last song that we're going to sing is In Christ Alone. We're going to sing all the full verses. Um, if you don't mind, we'll just sing all the full verses standing up. Let's just feel free to worship God um, because he is our rock. In Christ alone, our hope is found. Everything about us is all in him. So let's just stand up and worship God and really mean it, that in Christ alone, only in Christ, is our hope, is everything we find. God of heaven, Amen. we thank you for this afternoon. Amen. We thank you for camp meeting. Amen. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for this holy gathering. Amen. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. O God of heaven, we thank you because you have called us so that we will not remove the ancient landmarks. Amen. And here we come before you, O God, as this generation. Come and help us. Amen. Jesus, help us. Amen. You have told us that if we will only try, you will help us. Amen. God, help us. Amen. We don't want to remove any ancient landmarks. All the doctrines, all the teachings, all the precepts. Help us in this generation of ours. Keep us in this way. Oh God of heaven, come down into this gathering. Come and save souls. Come and sanctify. Come and baptize. Come and reanoint. Come and heal. Oh God, deliver. 
bless this meeting, O God, and keep us in your way. Until we will see you face to face. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, so, announcements will remain the same as we had this morning. Um, we'll have our, after the youth service, we'll have our dinner, which will be at 6 p.m., 6 to 7. And then choir members are reminded about their practice at 7 p.m. on the platform. Um, well, welcome to Youth Service 2017. Are you excited to be here? Yes. That's great, that's great. And I'm sure the Lord has something for each and every one of you. And I know that by his grace, where you're seated right now, it's not by chance. God knows where you would sit and the blessing he has in store for you. All you need is an open heart, ready to receive, and he will bless you. Um, we're going to continue with our service. Uh, we're going to have the choir actually to come and sing one more song, um, solo choir, and then there will be room for short testimonies, 120 seconds, two minutes testimonies, for as many as would like to give a shout to the Lord for what he has done. And then we'll have the last special before the word, of ex the word this morning. And we know the Lord will bless us. Keep your heart open. Don't see any of us, see Christ, yeah. and I'm sure you will find him. Amen. So we'll have the choir come up to sing um, their next song, and then we'll have testimonies.
I want to thank God tonight, um, for his goodness. Um, I want to thank God for my three Christian experiences. I want to thank God especially because this year I went to Portland for the first time and I was surrounded by so many young people who had such a hunger and thirst for God. And it really encouraged, we really encouraged each other, we prayed together, we were just there for each other. And it really made a difference to camp meeting and I really praise God, you know, and I pray that God will, the same spirit that was with Portland youth will be with us as well. I just want to thank God for saving my soul. I thank God for sanctifying me. I just want to thank God, especially for my life. Um, God is so amazing. Um, like two years ago, I moved to Scotland to do like a master's degree. I didn't know what I was getting into. It was just very challenging. Um, even like for me to come here, I was just like so scared because the devil was just like, oh, don't stand. And like I ended up like standing up, obviously. But um, I just want to thank God because he's faithful. He took me to Scotland. I had like a very difficult two years like doing my master's. But um, God is always faithful. Um, you know, God, God is amazing. Like, I get all teary every time I testify. Everybody knows me because I cry. Because God is just amazing. He <laughs> God, God, God is perfect. Um, the main reason why I stood up, like, um, this afternoon is to just thank him for, like, uh, making me get through my exams. I prayed to God. I was like, God, if I get through my exams and I pass, I'm going to testify. I've never testified at camp meeting. And I really don't like standing up and stuff like that. But... God is just faithful. He made me to stand up. And um, I said to God, God, like, if you make me pass my exams, because my first year was, like, really horrible. Like, I failed my exams. I had to receive one of my exams, like, twice. And to a point, I was just like, I don't know if I'm going to continue with this course. And then I prayed to God. I was like, God, you took me to Scotland for a reason. 18,000 for two years is not going to go down the drain. And um, I just believed in God. And, you know, God is so faithful. Even the day before my exam, because I got my results last Friday, the day before my last exam, I broke into tears. And and I had five minutes to put myself together to get into a clinical examination of like 12 stations. But you know, God is faithful. He gave me a B in that class. I was just like, God is amazing. And um, I got my results. I came out with a merit in my master's. It's just like, you know, like um, what I've realized through it all, anyway, with all my experience, I feel like God was just trying to, you know, sometimes we hold so much to, 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 to things. We want to get degrees. We want to get this. We want to get this. And God was just trying to show me like, okay, if I take this away from you, are you still going to love me? Are you still going to like, um, you know, praise me? And um, I felt like, you know, in the first year, God was just trying to say, you know, Jesse, I can take away this from you. And he did that. And then I realized that, you know, if he takes this degree away from me, I'm still going to love him no matter what. And, um, yeah, and then obviously with him, like me crying before the exam, it just made me realize that, you know, God wants to prove that he's God. Because if I hadn't maybe cried before the exam, I'd just be like, oh, I did it by myself and stuff like that. But now I know God can do anything. Like, I can testify, you know, God is perfect. Like, I had to quit my job last year as well because um, school was so hard. But if I tell you, God provided my rent. He gave me pocket money. He gave me everything. And he's just so amazing. I just want to praise him all the way. Please pray for me. Yeah. Okay, um, I want to thank God for, um, for saving my soul, for sanctifying me, for baptizing me. Um, for a similar reason as Jesse, I thank God that, I went, uh, that I've finished my degree. Um, it was really hard as well. It was like I was trying to do it in my own strength as well, and it wasn't going well. And God really took control, and he helped me to get through it. And I just want to thank him and just give him all the glory and the honor. I just want to thank God today because he has saved my soul, he has sanctified me and he's filled me with his Holy Ghost. Um, mainly, I just want to thank God for logistics. Logistics in my life has been a disaster. I've, I tried going to Norway this, you know, early this year, I failed. Um, I forgot my passport back home in Manchester. And then I tried going to Portland and then I realized my passport was expired. I, I, I said this, this testimony in Portland, but then I tried coming to camp here again, and just the night before, I had a flat tire, and I was just wondering, like, you know, why, 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 why is logistics just so terrible for me? But, I, you know, I just thank God because God took me to Portland. He brought me back safely. He took me, he brought me here, you know, he's, I believe he's going to take me back safely. I thank God for this gospel, you know, I thank God for, for everyone in it. You know, it's, you can just feel God in, in here, like, you can feel God moving, you can feel God working. I just thank God, I'll, I praise my own servant for the rest of my life.
I want to thank God today for my Christian experiences. Um, I want to thank God because when I was young, I always had this vision that I would be a childcare solicitor, and God did that for me this year. I want to thank God today, especially for my family. Um, my little brother is going to be graduating soon, and that's four out of four children to graduate in my household. And I thank God that, that despite what the devil tried to do in my home, God overcame, and we have graduated. I want to give God all the glory. Thank you. I just want to thank God for saving me and uh, bringing me to this camp meeting. I, I'm thankful for the opportunity to finally come to the UK. Um, I pray that God will do something good for me and uh, I want to go home with a blessing. Thank you. And this is the third time in my life I was stand up to testify. Um, last year I was into some business and I lost completely. So the capital went like that. So I said to myself, okay, I took my degree, clean it, then I need to look for a job. And in December I went to Pekka and then I went on the altar to pray. I went on the altar and I prayed to God that God, I've done this and it has happened. Please help me. Then in January, I threw my CV out. Anyway, April, March, April, I had three jobs standing before me. So call, call, call. Do you want your salary increase? Story, story. Then one was a managerial, one was lead, the other one was analyst. So I just decided, okay, I'll go, I'll pick the analyst because I was scared. Ah, planning manager with TFL, no. So anyway, I went for that. And then um, like um, a month ago, there was a position opened where I work, I work at um, Castle Donington, and then I spoke to my colleague, actually in the team, I'm the youngest, I'm the only single, these are 43 year old men, I'm, we work together. So, and then I told them, hey guys, look at this position. They were like, ah, no, 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 I beg, I beg. We are still okay with this. And this is a joke, so you just came, you are less than two months, what's your problem? And then after two days, I just said, I'll put in. They were like, now wow, and then I did. Then after a week and two days, two of them came to me and said, DG, uh, we have interest in this job. And I said, okay. Actually, the manager called me and spoke to me. And then after that, I was like, ah, okay, no problem. He told me, send me an updated version of your CV. I was like, okay, no problem. But since he's like a year one student or four one student going on an interview with year six students, these are 43 year old men. They've been in the industry for more than 10 years. So I was like, oh, no, I back out. If you guys are interested in this, I'm out. And then I didn't send the updated CV. Two Thursdays ago, I got an email from the HR that, hey, you have an interview next week Thursday, and you need to send your update. I was like, what? So I didn't mind. The lady actually walked down to me and told me, DG, where is your CV? I was like, I'll get it tomorrow. Friday, she came again. I said, I'll do it over the weekend. <laughs> and then Monday, she didn't come to me. And Tuesday, she, she just stared at me and walked away. So at work, I just updated it, and then I sent it to her in the afternoon on Tuesday, interview Thursday. So I wasn't prepared for it, but there was something that happened with that top manager. So I was like, he wouldn't see me as being stupid, because I said I was going to reject it, and somebody said, no, they wouldn't look at you with good eyes. I was like, I can't compete with you, bros. You guys are, ah. they're like, ah, I know you. Nobody here we meet. Go now, everybody go do interview. It's like, oh, my goodness. So two Thursdays ago, I actually, I was not prepared to be sincere because, you know, I just, I said, no, this is not for me. It's not possible. How can I be competing with these guys? And I went on interview. Before I went, because I was not prepared, I just whispered some five minutes prayer to her. God, I'm in trouble. I put myself in this. Because I'm, I'm, I'm less than three months in this job, just two months and one week. And then we went for interview anyway. Friday when I closed from work, I got into my car and then my phone rang. Then I picked it. Hello? This is good fellow. And then he told me, you have the job. I was like, what? I, I told him immediately, I said, no way. <laughs> it was Friday. And he told me, don't tell anybody I'm going to speak to your colleagues on Tuesday. I thank God for this. I 
Actually, I wasn't planning to testify, um, but um, just hearing the wonderful testimonies of God and then knowing how, what a privilege it is to be back in the UK after many years, <laughs> um, I just felt that I, I needed to th just thank God. Um, God has been good. Um, I thank God for saving my soul, sanctifying me, and filling me with the Holy Ghost. I thank God that even though the journey has been challenging, that He's been with me. People have been like, oh, Victoria, you haven't changed. Oh, Victoria, you look so much younger. I tell you, it is God. Because if you know what I've been through, <laughs> you know it is God. So I'm just going to give him the glory. Because I stand here because it's God that brought me here. I stand because it is God that has given me the strength to stand. I thank God because it is God that has given me the voice to speak to you guys and just... Praise his name this morning. Thank you. The body was you tonight. The body was just to this to your father. I'm sitting down to watch your birthday. I'm picking your mommy. The body was to the friend of the day. I'm picking what you wish for. It's just about to pray. I want to thank God for my life. Me standing here without saying anything is testimony on its own. My life is a testimony. So um, but I'm going to tell you this so someone could be encouraged. When I got to Nigeria, okay, I'm going to start by saying I thank God for saving my soul, <laughs> sanctifying me, and baptizing my with the Holy Ghost on fire. So I got to Nigeria. May, uh, beginning of May. So uh, a few weeks, my dad told me that, Tim, before you left Nigeria for London, you prayed to God, you know, at this location. And you've gotten back. God told me that he's expecting you to come and say, Ekwile. Like, Ekwile is like, you know, I don't know how to say it in English. But, you know, it's the, it's the opposite of welcome, you know. When you meet people at home and then you're like, hello, you know, that's what it means. That's, that's like the meaning in English. So, and I said, and by the time I got to Nigeria, I was like spiritually down. I wasn't like hot anymore. I wasn't reading my Bible that much. I wasn't praying. I was like discouraged because I believed God is not responding to me in the way I wanted him to. And God understood that. So I didn't know that God had a plan to actually fix that because that was like a big thing for me in my life. So I answered my dad, but I went there to pray and I wasn't really connecting. And I told God, see, you asked me to come and I know I'm not praying properly because I've, I've lost it. So like, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I don't think I can meet your requirements because I know exactly how I need to pray if I want to get anything from you, but I'm not doing it right now. So you just have to like, just overlook the requirements and just, 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 just minister to me, like do what you want to do. So a few weeks after, I went to pray again. Okay, but at that time I prayed, I went there, I was motivated because my mom was kind of not well. So, and I wanted to pray for her I had to pray to God to heal her because I believe in divine healing. I've never, ever been to the hospital for any treatment in my life. The only time I went to the hospital was I had an ankle sprain and I wanted to like resume football matches. So I had to go check up, you know, am I safe? So I, I, I never rely on drugs, uh, hospital. I only pray to God. So I prayed to and God answers me. He answers me, not all my prayers. He answers the ones that he wants to answer. So and the other ones he doesn't answer. Even it does better things. So I was praying for my mom and I made a promise to God. God told me that, Tim, you see, you wouldn't have come to me if, if your mom was well, you see, because now I have your attention. You're praying for your mom. So I didn't know that God had planned something for me. So that night I was praying very fervently. And when I say fervently, I mean it I, I, with all my heart. So then God came, like God actually came down. God, God, God has always been beside me, but he has never actually lived inside me. And I, I knew that. 
he actually came that night and installed himself inside me. I was making God, I was, I was promising God that if you heal my mom, I will always worship you, I will always pray. Then, okay, I'm going to have to continue this testimony sometime later. <laughs> but I praise God for his blessings and for his communication with me.
Amen. 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 You all agree with me that for the last song that the choir have just rendered is enough sermon for us all to just go down on our knees to pray. Because it says, it says, my life is in your hands. That no matter what may come your way, have you been overtaken by trials? Has the life pressed you down that we can make it with Jesus? But you know what? Her adventure. There are some people here. Maybe you don't have that testimony. Maybe you cannot for short tea say that your life is in the hands of Jesus. That's an opportunity for us tonight. Amen. 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 John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1 through 15. Please bear with me. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must need go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sika, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son. That Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob well was there, Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Seven. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For the disciples were gone away unto the city to buy food, to buy meat. Then said the woman unto the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which I am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samarians, with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who is he that said unto thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would give, who would have given thee living water. And the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. For whence then hast thou the living water? Are thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of the water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. For the water that I shall give him, for the water that, that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Amen. And the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water Amen. that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. When the Lord wants to bless a man, he sends his words to him. If we look at the introduction of this verse that we've just read, I want to tell you this someone going through Samaria. Going through Samaria. There had been a dialogue between Jesus and a woman, the woman of Samaria. And in the introduction, he says that when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees heard that Jesus have baptized more disciples than John. Before I go into this, let us just have a little bit of background about what transpired here. 
We could see that. We can see the priority, the importance that our Lord Jesus Christ has placed on the life of a soul. There is so much importance he put in the life of a soul. In this part that we've read, we could see how he had to go to Samaria. But before that time, Amen. Amen. Jesus Amen. Amen. Let us go to verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus had made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, the Pharisees and the Samarians, they had nothing in common. In fact, for the Pharisees to travel, for the Pharisees to travel through Galilee from Judea, they must have to pass through Samaria, which is the shortest route. But because they have nothing in common, in fact, the Pharisees see the, the Samarians as infidels. They see them as people that are unclean, in that they have no dealings with the Samarians. So for them to go through the shorter route, they will have to go through long route because they don't want to have anything to do with the Samarians. And that was why this dialogue called into bed when the woman was asking Jesus Christ, how come you being a Jew, you are asking of me water. We don't have any dealings. But you know, that is to tell us that that is the importance in which our Lord Jesus Christ has placed in the life of his child, in the life of a sinner, in the life of whosoever that is looking out unto him. What happened here? Before now, we could see that our Lord Jesus Christ have had a fruitful ministry in Judea. One could have thought that he would just stay in Judea and don't move at all. He was doing well. In fact, the Bible says that, that, that he baptized more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself baptized not, but the disciples. But what did he do? He was saying that I am not comfortable where I am. Despite the fact that I have this whole crowd, and I sit in London, and I sit in Birmingham, and I sit in wherever we have come from. He said, no, 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 no. There is still a soul I'm looking for. Yeah. And that was the reason why my Lord Jesus Christ moved away from Judea to go into Samaria. With our Lord Jesus Christ, there's no Jew. There's no schism. There's no black. There's no white. There's no Greek. There's no healing. We all, as far as we enter into the fellowship of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have equal rights of sonship. May God please count you worthy. May the Lord please count me worthy. Let's look at it. He says, and he must need go through Samaria. He must need go through your Samaria. My Lord Jesus Christ needs to go through your heart. He needs to go through your life. And that was the reason why he is going through this way. Why did he bring us to this camp meeting? Why? Because he's looking for a soul that he can come in through. May God please count us worthy. Let's look at it in verse 5. Then cometh he into a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground which Jacob gave to his, to his son Joseph. Now Jake, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus therefore being wearied of his journey, sat forth at the well. And it was about the sixth hour. Let's pause a little while and look at this. The Bible says Jesus was wearied. 
One could have thought that this is our Lord Jesus Christ. Why should he be hungry? But you know what he said? If you take your eyes through down to verse 32, we could see where he had a dialogue with his disciples. And they were asking him that when there is meat, why can't you eat meat? He said, I have meat to eat. And that ye not not. And they said, has anybody given you food? He said, no, my meat is to do the will of my father and to finish his work. Amen. So maybe Jesus Christ was seemingly hungry. It might look as if he was tired. Oh, yes, in the physical he was. But in the spiritual, that is not his work. His work is to do the will of his father and to finish his work. And that is the reason why he was going through that way. And he says here, that he was weed. Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Give me to drink. But I bet you are sitting here today. Or maybe you are listening to this sermon via the internet. Or maybe you are driving in your car listening to the word of God. The Lord God is asking for something from you. He is saying, my daughter, give me to drink. Give me of your hearts. Give me of your situation. That situation that looks very, very unsurmountable. Give it to me. He's crying, give me your soul. Give me. Let me make a life out of you. Are we listening to what the Lord is saying? But you know the funniest thing? Maybe you might, like the woman, try to approach this world in a philosophical manner. Like the woman tried to be very logical about the issue of her salvation. When the Lord Jesus Christ is calling upon her, give me your heart. Give me your soul. Let me make the best out of you. But look at what she said in verse 7. And then and verse 8. Let's go verse 7. Then come into a woman from Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Verse 8, for the disciples have gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto her, him, How is it that thou being a Jew, accept of drink, which of a woman of Samaria? For the Jew have no dealings with the... That is true. She is very correct. The Jew have no dealings with the Samarians. She has been very, 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 very religious now. She has gone very philosophical. And what she's saying is right. Sometimes we might sit in our situation and say, yes. Why is the Lord sending this message to me? Why is this message coming to me? I don't think I need to give my life to Christ. Oh, yes, brother. Oh, yes, sister. There is a reason why the Lord is calling unto you. Because he wants to help you. He's crying, give me of your heart. Give me of your soul. There is no point being very philosophical about the word of God. There is no point trying to deliberate about the word of God. The word of God is real in its entirety. May God please open our eyes. He's calling upon you because he sees a need in your heart. Do you know you might have left everywhere? Some people just managed to be here. Let me just come because I know I will meet the Lord. And the Lord is saying, give me of your heart. Give me of your soul. You know, I will just encourage us. If we can just find time to open our heart unto the Lord. He is the one calling. He is the one saying, give me. Give me. Let me make the best out of you. Let me bring something that you have never experienced out of your life. May God please come and help us. He says, give me. Let me turn your wretchedness into success. Let me turn your bitterness into sweetness. Let me turn those things that look unsurmountable into a plane. Oh, may God please come down this, morning, this evening. The Lord God is here to bless you. Have you ever thought about your life and said, I am tired of the life I'm living in. And somebody here is saying, give me of your life. Give me of your heart. I want to make a difference from you. What happened? Verse 10. And, uh, verse, verse 9. And he said unto the woman of Samaria, unto her, How is it that thou being a Jew, accept of me drink, for which a woman of Samaria, 
For the Jews have no dealings with him. In verse 10. And Jesus, and, Jesus, and, and Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who is it that saith unto thee, Give me to drink. If thou knowest the gift of God, the reason why you are not saved is because you don't know the gift of God. The reason why we are still in our sin. And it looks as if every year, day and out, you come in here, you, 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 you look as if you are saved. And the moment you step out of this campgrounds, you are your other person. It's because you still don't understand the gift of God. This woman look at Jesus. She thought Jesus is just like any other man. And the master said, give me. If she knew the person that is saying, give me to drink, she will rush and give him two buckets. But she did not recognize it. She did not see it. She was seeing something else. And he spoke to her authoritatively. If thou knowest the gift of God, and who is it that saith unto thee, give me to drink, Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he will give thee living waters. If thou knowest the gift of God, do you know the gift of God? The reason why we are still in our sin is because we still don't know the gift of God. If thou knowest the gift of God, if thou knowest the gift of God, my dear friends, there is a reason why this word is coming unto us tonight. If thou knowest the gift of God, if thou knowest the gift of God, that situation you find yourself, if you know the gift of God, have you been, you are in sin and you said no, there is no way I can come out of this. See, I, 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 was, I was in need last week. Even before I came to camp, I did it. Do you know the gift of God? My brother sitting by my side will not know what I have done. If thou knowest the gift of God, you think you have gone so deep. Let's read on. And the woman said unto him, Sir, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. Oh, may God deliver us. May God please open our eyes. One could have thought that this woman would recognize who she's talking to. She still did not know the master. How many times has the word of God been coming to us from these holy pulpits, from men of God, women of God, and still we still don't know what the Lord is talking about. You still don't recognize that this person talking to you is not the flesh me, it's not me. It is the voice of the Lord speaking to us. She still went on. Another side of it. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. She has looked at Jesus with a physical eye. She thought Jesus Christ is that man that she went to for help and the man turned her down. She thought Jesus Christ is that man that promised me that he's going to help me last week, but he disappointed me. She thought Jesus Christ is her father that disappointed her. How far have you gone? You can bear me witness that you might have tried everything, but all has still failed you. And she said, sir, you have nothing to draw with. You have nothing to draw. You cannot, you cannot save me. You have nothing to deliver me. But I can tell you, my friends, the Lord Jesus has the power to deliver. Yeah. My Lord Jesus has the power to save. Yeah. No matter how far. See, let me tell you one thing. Let me be very, very frank with you. Did you, did you fall into sin yesterday? And you have decided today 
that you want to move on with the Lord. The Lord has the power. He will deliver you today and it's for final. It is for final. He will do it. Please put those doubts away. See, that is the reason why we are here. If we are all perfect, we won't be here. Oh, may God please come and deliver us. Look at what she says. She says you have, you can't do it. But the Lord can do it. You know what she wants again? She said, why? Why? The reason why is that thou hast nothing to draw with and the well is deep. My situation is deep. I have gone so deep. You cannot understand. If I tell you, a, don't tell me. If I tell you just a microcosm of what I've done, you will look at me and you will spit. I have gone deep. Is that your situation? My situation is deep. My sin is deep. Nobody can deliver me. I am helpless. I am hopeless. I am gone deep. But I have a testimony for you. I have a word for you. From whence, look at the question. I've gone so deep. For whence then hast thou the living water? She said again, Are thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and the cattle? Our Lord God is greater than the physician. Yes. Our Lord God is greater than that man, yes. that woman yes. that promised you and they failed. Yes. Our Lord God is greater. Our Lord God is greater than that problem of yours. That thing that is holding you back, that makes you fall. Today you are saved, tomorrow you rise, today you fall, tomorrow you rise. You cannot be living a consistent Christian life. Our Lord Jesus Christ is greater than that. He's here to deliver. Not only deliver, is to make an end to the devil. Can you imagine the devil calling black white? The devil has gone so much, so deep that he has destroyed the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he will never succeed. It's the devil that will tell you that this is black when it is white. Or you call white black. My brother, what is sweet in living in sin? What is sweet in, 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 in living in confusion? What is sweet in being, in being, in being, in being disheartened? What is sweet in being frustrated. What is it, my brother? What is it? The Lord says that if thou knowest the gift of God, and look at what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Amen. Amen. Whosoever drinketh of the water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. For the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing him up into an everlasting life. Yeah. How many of you want that water? Hold on a second. I don't want you to raise up your hands. Because these altar benches, we are going to settle with the Lord tonight. Yeah. Please, let me, let me sound a warning. The Bible says, if thou knowest the gift of God, if you know this Lord and you are very sure, you will come and approach him. But hold on. Just hold on a second. Verse 15. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water. Give me this water that I thirst not. Neither come thee that to draw. The joy and consolation that I have after reading this part of the Bible is that when the woman was leaving our Lord Jesus Christ, she was saved. You know, and the Lord asked her that when she, when she said that, the Lord said, go call, go call. Jesus said, said unto her, go and call thy husband and come here. You know what she said? He said, I have no husband. He said, eh, but even the man that you are living with is not even your husband. For Rose to be able to get from the Lord, there must be a time of confession. There must be confession. You can't get saved if you don't confess it. She confessed her sin. When she was leaving the Lord. Hallelujah. 
She got saved. The Lord God is going through somebody's Samaria today. The Lord God is going through somebody's Samaria today. He said, if you know the gift of God, the devil will not hold you back in your seat. Are you ready? Are you ready? Please come to the altar of prayers. The Lord God is here. If thou knowest the gift of God, and who is he that said, give me to drink, then thou will give unto him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for another time that we can come before thee, or we can present our petitions before thee. Come down and save us. Come down and sanctify us. Come down and fill us with the Holy Ghost and fire. Come down and deliver us, Lord. Come down and heal us, Lord. Even right now, in Jesus' name we pray.